what's going on it's been a it's been a few minutes been meaning to make another update but been busy been busy see my, my hair is growing out you know I need to uh, I, bit, I haven't shaved my head I got a shitload of laundry I need to do uh, the trucks dirty as shit you know I'm wearing I'm like got the last pair of clean pants I have and that's why that's with wearing certain pants two three days at a time depending on how dirty they are I'm just now finally on my last clean pair I can't even like the other ones like you know like when I used to work construction if the laundry hadn't been done yet uh, I would just go and find the cleanest pair of pants that's in the dirty pile and just start wearing those motherfuckers But yeah, it's to the point where I can't even go back and find a clean pair of Pants like shorts or jeans or whatever that is kind of relatively clean because I've already done worn them two three days You know, I just uh, I I didn't get a chance to uh, Do laundry over the weekend I, uh, I ended up taking a reset at a little, tiny little pilot in the middle of Iowa that, that just with nothing around it, with no laundry facility, no nothing. It's just kind of where I ended up. But uh, I've been busy, you know. Uh, I've actually made one or two other videos, I just haven't posted them. You know, sometimes I end up in an area where I don't have good like what I typically do because when you upload videos from your phone to YouTube they they upload slowly so what I'll do is if I have a video I need to post I'll set it to upload while and then I'll go to sleep and I'll let it upload while I'm asleep so that way you know in the morning it's done you know because another thing is it, it it sucks up a lot of bandwidth on my phone so if I'm using my phone for other things which I typically do throughout the day um, it slows down the upload then when I'm driving around I'll gain signal lose signal and that'll slow down the upload even more so it's just best to do it while I'm asleep but you know certain places I go like Wisconsin I don't get the I don't get a great signal uh, you know and then I end up roaming you know I only have so much roaming data I have a lot but it runs out eventually because I use a lot of it you know but you know everything like when I when I talked about uh, the first week update like things that were going on uh, in my first week here uh, I was talking about you know I like the company I like just about everything about it except for the loads I was getting sucked they were garbage loads like I got I got better loads at Western Express we're getting like 340 mile loads and 400 mile loads I was like you know and when you're when you're running flatbed and you're I think I've talked about this before when you're running flatbed and you're running 400 mile loads you spend so much time strapping and chaining and tarping and strapping and chaining and tarping all the fucking time you're working your ass off but you're not making that much money you know you get a 300 20 mile load that's a six hour run you pick that up at 10 in the morning you're delivering sometime around uh four or five and then you're running down to pick up another one that delivers the next day so you you delivered picked up delivered and picked up all in one day that's a lot of fucking work and you're not making more money sure you make tarp pay money the tarp the tarp pay is good here but you, you know, you're talking about spending half the day picking up and dropping off. You know, you're, you're spending four, five, six hours, or how many ever hours, uh, strapping and tarping and chaining loads and shit. I mean, you, you know, tarp pay is good, but tarp pay, tar pay is supplementary. You know, I don't, I, you know, I, I like. Tarp pay, it kind of makes it worthwhile to fuck around with tarps, but it doesn't pay your bills. It's just, it kind of makes up, it helps make up for your lost time. 
It's like detention pay, you know? You can't pay your bills on tarp pay. But, I've been smoking too many cigarettes lately. I need to cut back. You know, I just, I've been running hard and, you know, it's, it's my only, my last true vice. So I've, I've actually, I, I, I usually smoke a pack a day. I think I'm up to like a pack and a half a day at least. You know, some days, maybe even two packs, smoking too much. You know, you smoke too much, then you get sick, and then you're really in trouble. Uh, I have to cut back at some point. But, uh, other than that, uh, as far as the miles are concerned, you know, everything's kind of turned around, you know? You know, ran, ran a shitty week, ran a shitty week, ran a mediocre week, and then, boom, 1,300-mile load. Boom, 1,100-mile load. You know, boom, 600 mile load, and that's the week. You know, uh, so I did, I did a 3,200 mile week. Uh, after tarp pay and shit like that, $1,100 net paycheck. <laughs> so if I, if I, and, and took a reset, 3,200 miles and took a reset. That's how you manage your time, but you can't fuck around. It, to to run 3,000 plus miles. And take a reset and wake up Monday morning with a fresh 70 hour clock. And you're not getting violations, you know, and, and you know, bending the rules too much on the logs and shit like that is tricky. You gotta be really on your game. You can't be screwing around, you know. And you know, it's you gotta you gotta be getting loads in on time. You gotta be sleeping at shippers and receivers, you know, stuff like that. You you gotta you've gotta do what you gotta do. You know, you got to be strategic to get 3,200 miles or 3,500 miles in a week. You know what I mean? You know, and I feel like that's part of the reason a lot of guys that the industry average is 2,500 miles a week. Because that would suggest most drivers get around 2,500. Some drivers get around 2,000 or so. And some drivers get 3,000 or so. You know, that's, that's why 2,500 miles a week is the industry average is the mean average right because i feel like a lot of dudes spend a lot of time sitting on duty at shippers and receivers and you just you're burning your clock and it's irresponsible and it's unnecessary you don't have to you know you gotta you know you gotta you gotta try to bank as much time as you possibly can you know like like even when you're doing your pre-trip and your post-trip inspection you know, I mean, some companies like you have some companies say you have to log this much time for your pre-trip and your post-trip and shit like that. You know, but it's like if your pre-trip takes you nine minutes, it takes you nine minutes. If it takes you 24 minutes, it takes you 24 minutes. You know, there shouldn't be a set time to do a pre-trip or post-trip, you know, but just when you're doing your pre-trip or post-trip, get your ass out of the truck and get it fucking done quick, you know. Check every, you know, grab your flashlight, you know, pop that hood. Okay, fluid good, fluid good, fluid good. No leaks, no leaks, no leaks. Close the hood. Okay, mud flap, mud flap, lights, lights, lights. You know, tire, 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 tire. You know, everything's good. Okay, pre trip, post trip, over. You know, get off that fucking line four. You know, when you, you know, when you pull into the parking lot, you know, when you pull into the parking lot, you stop that truck, depending on what kind of computer you have. You're still on the drive line while you're sitting. You're on that drive line for a certain number of minutes, you know? And you get off that drive line as soon as possible. As soon as the, the brakes get pulled, on duty post trip inspection, you know, off duty brake, you know, as soon as you get off line four, bank those drive hours. That's your most precious clock, because that's your money making clock, you know? And then it banks your 70 hour clock. But, anyways. You know, that's, you gotta do shit like that. You gotta be on your fucking game as far as time management to make 3,200 miles a week. Well, I did a 3,200 mile a week and I think I'm looking at 2,900 miles for this week. 28, 27, 28, 2,900, whatever. Which next week I'll probably be looking at net $900 check, which is great. I'll take it. $1,100 check, net, I'll take it. That's good. You know, other, like, then, at this point, I'm, you know, I'm happy with everything. You know? So, it, it, and that answers the big question that I had with, with coming into this company, is do they have the freight? You know? 
because you know when you talk to these companies you know you talk to the recruiters and stuff uh, <laughs> I don't even ask like how many miles are you, you got are your drivers averaging how are you doing on freight like I don't even ask because the recruiters don't really know they, they you know and they're, they're, they're just they're gonna what are they gonna tell you they're trying to get you on board they're gonna say yeah yeah our, our drivers average 2500 uh, and uh, freight's kind of slow right now but we're still doing good every company says that so I don't even ask like what kind of miles are you running how are you doing on freight how busy are you staying you know because you know obviously if they're trying to hire people they're not gonna say well things are slow you know people are making about 2,000 miles average you know which is which sucks you know <laughs> I mean, a major carrier, if they're doing their job, major carriers shouldn't have uh, problems finding freight. You know, Swift, Schneider, Rail, Melton, fuck Western Express, for that matter. Any major carrier, they should have the contracts to uh, keep everybody rolling. You know, because they don't have to rely on the load board. They got contracts with companies to keep rolling. So, I mean, it's just, uh, so far, you know, everything that I've talked about with the company, I like. Love this truck. I love driving it. Haven't had any problems with it. The only problem I've had so far is that the uh, sensor out on the front of the bumper got too dirty. And apparently, when it gets too dirty, uh, it all kinds of lights come on on the dashboard my cruise control doesn't work it deactivates and I got all kinds of fault codes and the whole thing the whole system freaks the fuck out you know I got all kinds of fault codes and engine lights and shit on if there's too many bugs on that fucking sensor so now I keep it really clean and I didn't realize it was that sensitive but as long as I keep that sensor clean then I'm good you know now I've got the truck up to like 13,000 miles uh, I haven't had any problems with it. You know, the trailers are in great shape. You know, I just... It's so nice not having to deal with all these fucking issues I used to have to deal with with Western Express. Every, every time you were going to drop a trailer and pick up another trailer, like, it's like, ah, oh, damn it. You know? Because it's either one of two things. One, I've got a good trailer that's in good condition and doesn't have any problems, and I'm probably going to get one that does have problems. Or, I've already fixed all the problems with this trailer and had to deal with all the bullshit. Now I'm going to find something. I mean, you're going to pull a trailer off the drop yard that's got four lights out. It's missing a mud flap. Tires are worn the fuck out on it. You know, it's missing winches. It's got broken winches. It's got holes in the deck. Rub rails are all bent to shit and fucked up. The alignment way off. It tracks way off to the right for people running over curbs. I don't have to deal with any of that shit anymore. All every trailer I like, I, I let's see, I picked up one trailer that had a little. The alignment was a little bit off, and I picked up one other trailer, which is the trailer I have now. Uh, had a worn out tire. That the the it was a recap, and the tread was starting to separate from the tire. So I was gonna run through the yard, and I sent my DM a message, said, "Hey man, I got a bad tire." I need to get this thing changed out because I had a 1300 mile load to run with it and uh, I was like can I just run through the yard and get this taken care of real quick he said yeah no problem go ahead come to the yard you know three hours show by the time I showed up to the time out the door three hours they I, you know I showed them here here's the problem they changed out both tires on that hub so here you go good to go you know I was out the door you know I mean with like Western you know, I had a load on a trailer, you know, that I had to take, you know, like with Western, you got to put a trailer in the shop. It's like, you might as well just ask them to get you another load because that motherfucker could be like, they're so backlogged with stuff. They're just like, they're, they're, they're like at capacity all the time, you know, like, oh, oh, you got to, you could, you need a new tire on a trailer. Well, uh, you'll go to the back of the line and you'll, cause they'll have nine other trailers with loads on them that were there first that need to get repaired so like your load is probably gonna be a day late at least you know you're better off just saying like look just give me another load give me another load that's on the yard and just have someone else take this load when it gets out of the shop because they're so damn backlogged 
you know because this company has multiple uh, yards that work on their trucks and trailers so they're not you know Western it's like you get a message every week talking about all the different uh, like okay the uh, Pennsylvania yard don't go in there for repairs because they're backlog don't go to the Nashville yard because we're backlog you know you're backlog because you're all you're working on is all their your lease trucks all the trucks that you're trying to make ready, pull the Qualcomm's out and PM them and clean them up so that you can put them out in the auction lot. That's half the shop at least. Like you can't even get your truck washed at the yard because they're too busy washing all the trucks that they're gonna sell. So the, the, the trucks that they're selling down there at Western take pre precedent over the trucks that are on the road hauling freight. You go in for a PM, it's like you gotta wait behind like 80% of the shop capacity is working on trucks that no one's even fucking driving they're gonna sell them <laughs> because they want to make money off of selling the trucks like have a third party fleet maintenance company come in and take care of this shit 80 percent of your shop capacity is it is taking care of trucks that you're getting rid of this is ridiculous i don't have to deal with that shit here they got multiple shops at every they got shops at every terminal you know and they're not they're not focused on, I think the only terminal that focuses on uh, the trucks that they're selling, leasing, getting rid of, whatever, is the headquarters. And that shop is fucking huge. And it's out in the middle of nowhere, so drivers aren't constantly coming through it. I mean, they are, but not, not like the other yards and terminals. But anyway, little things like that, you know? Like, you know, here... It's a good thing to go through a terminal at this company. You know, the terminals are comfortable. They're not they're not a nightmare to get out of. You can roll in, you can get fuel there. You know, they got all the amenities, a truck stop, what have they got clean restrooms, they got they got hot food and a big ass menu, you get food and stuff like that. You got an ATM machine. They got lots of parking. You know, they got they got a self-serve truck wash that you can use anytime you're taking a you can take a reset on the yard. They got a laundry room that is free. Western Express had coin operated. You know, they got showers that are truck stop quality. Then they got like eight of them at the Gary terminal. It's really nice. Like if you could take a reset at the terminal, it's awesome. You know? It's absolutely great. You know, it's it's easy to change out equipment and stuff like that. You know, it's just, everything about this company is just so much more professional, you know? The only thing so far that I'm still kind of adjusting to with this company, the only setback, which isn't really a setback, it's just a growing pain, is that, you know, if you, you watch my video about Western, I said, you know, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're working hard they leave you the fuck alone here like man they're sticklers about the fucking hours of service you know what i mean they really are so uh shit i'm gonna run out of memory because i got too many videos on my phone that i gotta post but anyways uh everything's good man everything's working out with this company so far if anybody was wondering uh i'm really liking it uh, you know, but, you know, as far as the hours of service, I'll talk more about that later. But that's just an update on what's going on right now. So I'll talk to you guys pretty soon.